Feminist and SPH. Let's give it up for Fiona Asoka Chita. Hello. You may have wondered what warranted me to be standing on the stage today. Or you may have wondered how good of a feminist I am that I deserve to be speaking about such a commonly spoken about topic. The simple answer to both of these questions is, I have no idea. Wait, let me rephrase. Hi, I'm Fiona Asaokachita. And I am here today because I deserve it. Do I sound like a better feminist now? Yes, because I sound assertive, because I know what I want and I'm not afraid to get it. The simple reason why I am known as the local feminist in Espeja is because I am fierce, I am confident, and I'm not afraid to fight anyone, anytime. In a room full of men, I will take charge. In a group of girls, I will take charge. And this doesn't always go, out, go well with a lot of people, which is why I'm not the most liked person around. My mother doesn't enjoy me being the local feminist because to her, this translates as being brutish and unladylike. Basically things that no good Chindo girl should ever aspire to be. She says that girls who sit with their legs crossed and doesn't always argue with men and women alike are better and more attractive. But I know what she actually means is, I need to stop the whole feminist act. See, the thing about why my mother is so concerned is not that she disagrees with the fundamentals of feminism. It's not about that at all. When I was in eighth grade, which may seem like a lifetime ago to a lot of us, I ran as the presidential candidate for the A3 liberals against a predominantly male group of presidential candidates. What my opponent from the A3 conservatives remarked about me after being crushed in a debate in which they spent zero time researching on was that I am a quote unquote cunning bitch. I was appalled by this comment as a tiny eighth grader because I was wondering why instead of commending me on my good efforts in convincing everyone about my arguments that he had to resort to petty and personal insults. I realized then by being assertive and being a strong personality, it, it is considered a defect or a problem for women to be like that. I started to realize that if I were to defend the rights and opportunities of men and women under the guise of feminism, that being overbearing will inevitably be always tied to my personality. The problem here, ladies and gentlemen, why my mother is upset and why my presidential opponent had to insult me is that being a good feminist is inextricably linked to being as masculine as possible. All of the traits that I have just described myself to be are all masculine in nature. You have to admit that women who appear more demure, sensitive, or traditionally feminine don't get the best rep as being feminists. However, women who have personalities that are strong, assertive, and confident are somehow considered better feminists. I mean, why else would we consider jobs such as being housewives, babysitters, or traditionally feminine jobs to not be the best feminist jobs? Whereas being CEO of a Fortune 500 company, or being an engineer, or being a tech expert, somehow gives you feminist street creds in a way. You could argue that this is because women haven't always had the opportunity to be in these kinds of positions and that women are now being commended for being able to break through the market of traditionally male dominated jobs. However, if the goal of people who consider themselves to be feminist is to achieve these statuses in order to be more accepted, then you are simply playing into the hand of the patriarchy. In order for me to 
talk about the behemoth that is the patriarchy, I must first tell you what it is and also what I have come to define feminism to be. I find that this is the core to most of feminist arguments because feminism could so easily be described by the masses as, I am an angry woman who likes to burn bras. <laughs> what I have come to define feminism to be is simply the equal opportunities of men and women. No, this does not mean I would like us to be the same, nor do I think that we are the same. However, let me put it like this. If I were to bench press 100 kilograms, you should not tell me that I can't because I'm a woman. However, you can tell me that I can't because I run like a wounded smoking veteran. My scope of opportunities should not be limited simply because of the set of genitals I was born with. Moving on to the patriarchy. It is this system put in place by centuries of men to systematically oppress women. However, the ironic thing is, the patriarchy has become this gigantic mass of societal expectations and norms that now men are oppressed by the patriarchy. Do you see how ironic it is that, be, that men, a system that men have created, have now victimized not only women, but also men? And this is why when feminists argue about why feminism needs to happen now, we often include words like crushing the patriarchy into our arguments. And we try to do this by being as opposed to everything the patriarchy and men do as possible. The problem with this, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are now entering, we are now in the third wave of feminism. What exactly does this mean? The first wave of feminism is the classic suffragette movement. It is when women vo wanted voting and education rights. It is when women wanted to simply be viewed as human beings. The second short-lived wave of feminism happened in the 1960s and 1980s in which women fought for reproductive rights, sexual liberty, and the right to not wear bras. But don't worry, I'm actually wearing a bra right now. <laughs> but now in 2016, where I see a majority of girls can actually go to school, can achieve their dreams, and do whatever they want, what is it that we are fighting for? We have become so sidetracked with petty issues because of a lack of vision. Feminists are seen as fem Nazis because we are fighting men instead of the oppressive system that looms above us all. The biggest problem that I see today that we can actually tackle is that a lot of women are still considered anti-feminists because they display stereotypically feminine traits. It is also a problem because if women were not to display these stereotypically feminine traits, they're considered unattractive or even undesirable by society. We are trying so hard to become like men in order to stand on equal grounds with them that we are inadvertently oppressing women. What I am proposing to you all today in this speech is that all women should be feminists. This does not mean that I would like every woman in the world to admit and proclaim that they are feminists, nor do I mean we should shove feminism down their throats. However, what I am simply proposing to you today is that the interests and the actions of all women should be considered feminist. If this is a movement to champion women, then we cannot afford to marginalize any woman. The interests of women should be a priority in feminism, not because we do not care about men or that we do not want to include them in the feminist movement. However, it is important to champion women right now because we need to help the disadvantaged sex. I am not saying we should condone the actions of women who support domestic abuse or feel like they deserve to be treated horribly. However, I'm applying this concept to women who choose to be housewives, to women who choose to be stereotypically feminine in nature, to women who love to cook, who love to make crafts, or to, who even likes the color pink. 
I'm applying this to whenever any of us scoff at women who refuse to speak up who refuse to challenge men in a professional setting. I'm applying this to any woman who seem like they are not a good enough feminist because they are more demure in nature or refuse to be more aggressive or assertive. Perhaps these women are simply shyer in nature, just like a lot of men are, and it is unfair for us to call them bad feminists or even setting the movement backwards if they refuse to conform to what we define as being a good feminist. Some people would argue that we cannot simply consider the actions of all women to be feminist. Because what if they like playing with Barbie dolls and kitchen sets because they've been poisoned by the patriarchy or gender norms? To this, I tell you that you are actually enforcing the patriarchy. By limiting what women can and cannot do, or what women can and cannot like, you are succumbing to the fact that the patriarchy wants to limit what women can do. Do you see how ironic it is that by not allowing women to express themselves in their own ways, by, but instead restraining them to become more masculine, we are in fact setting the movement backwards and even glorifying men. Third wave feminism, ladies and gentlemen, has reached a standstill. It has been cornered by our own pettiness and our lack of vision. If we don't save it now, feminism risks the chance of being shoved into the dark crevices of other social justice movements, such as allowing humans to identify as plants, to marry their dolls or dogs, basically social justice movements without basis. Feminism needs to continue. It cannot retire just yet. We see that there is still a need for us to push this movement. The goal now, as a new generation, is for us to champion the interests of women just enough so that we could start to move together to finally build a society with men. Why is it important to prioritize men uh, to prioritize women first, in a way. It is not because we do not care about their interests, but let me put it this way. If men and women together were running a 1600 meter race, and women had to start 500 meters behind men, it is ridiculous and ineffective for us to expect that women could finish in the same time as men. We need to propel women first to the same starting point as men so that we can finally start moving forward together. We should not be afraid to challenge what the feminist movement needs to do. What I am suggesting to you today is different from the traditional feminist arguments. I am taking us a step back, not to work with the system, but to change the way we look at the system. In the past, the objectives of feminists have always been material, whether it is to achieve new laws or rights. But what we need right now is a philosophical change, a mindset upheaval of what equality and quote-unquote crushing the patriarchy looks like. What I'm essentially trying to tell you today is that the feminist movement has reached a standstill. It cannot move forward any further. And, and as of right now, we need to change how we approach this monumental and fundamental problem in our society. Right now, feminists are not considered feminists simply because they display stereotypically feminine traits. Feminists are considered better feminists for being more masculine in nature. Women who are more traditionally feminine are considered a burden to the movement. This simply cannot continue, ladies and gentlemen. We need to consider the interests and actions of all women, regardless of how they are, to be feminist. People, there has to be something wrong if we are fighting ourselves. Why is it so important for us to decide whether a woman is a good feminist or not? Why is it so important for us to set what the criteria of being a good feminist is? The focus should not be on these things, ladies and gentlemen, but to 
fight the oppressive system together. If we are to move forward now, we need to move forward together. Thank you.